Hi folks, welcome to Periscope, and uh, it's good to be here with Holly, my daughter, in my little guitar room, and uh, we're going to just have some fun tonight, and uh, we might want, we could turn the fan off, I guess, but <laughs> I'll turn it off. <laughs> some people joining in. Sorry folks, it's been a hot day, and sometimes uh, it's hot in my little uh, room up here. This is my Olsen guitar. I have uh, several guitars around. I always like to take guitars out and just play them and have fun. Sometimes I plug them in, sometimes I don't. And uh, I have some old amps, some newer amps. And uh, anyway, it's just all fun. This is where my inspiration comes from. You know, so I used to ride on the road all the time. And uh, But anymore, it seems like when I'm writing or arranging, the best ideas come from this room right here. And this is what I can get along with. It was in another house a few, uh, oh, about three miles away. That I wrote this one. still takes a lot out of you but it's a lot of fun to play that's jazz in the box a song i wrote right here in cleveland i started off actually writing that song on a on a telecaster type guitar it was a gnl a set i started uh, to write that and started writing that on that guitar 
And I thought, well, I can do the little string bend. And so that's what I started doing. Now. And now on, uh, on my Taylors, uh, which are in the closet, but when, when, on my Taylor guitars, I still love to, by the way, I still love to take those out and play. But I could uh, put my hand around like this. It's a little skinnier and there's a lot of space there in between. And I could uh, push, I would push up. That's how I learned to do that. But as long as you learn to use two fingers, someone asked me that last week, how do I do the string bend? And uh, so a little guitar lesson here. We'll start off our guitar lessons tonight, right now. So what you do is, is this, two fingers, and I'm pressing here. Now this is on the Olsen. And Mr. Olsen actually sent me a, another post that's a little bit, if you notice, it's a little bit taller than the other ones, and I switched out myself. But here are two fingers, and you push down. And with two fingers, you get a little more control. One finger, well, it's a little bit hard. Same thing if I if I uh, uh, bring this down, and this down, and this down, and this down. And uh, I would write songs like this. And then later on, I wrote. And you just find those little things that that uh, that work. Um, sort of a Celtic thing and it's called uh, actually that one is Birmingham Steel and, uh, and I, I actually finished writing that in England so I did a little McCartney Lennon <laughs> Celtic uh, sound more like a uh, what's the instrument I'm talking about? I can't think of it. Not, not uh, anyway. I'll think of it. Almost like a, a baritone, like a mandola or something like that. And uh, but anyway, but the but I wrote it around this, and uh, and it actually goes a little faster. There's still guitar licks. And then later on I went And that's where a wall bash cannonball arrangement came from.
that is nothing I'm doing but that. Just prep, taking my two fingers and the tuning. Everybody's saying, okay, Doyle, what's the tuning? The tuning is D and instead of a, a B, it's an A. And so D, A, and then G. It's just a dad, okay? Or uh, it's actually the gad part of dad gad. If this, this is D, G, D, and then G, A, D. So it's digged gad. <laughs> if this were an A, it would be a dad gad. If I tune this. And I used to play a lot of that. actually. Uh, my friend uh, Lawrence Juber plays Dad Gad all the time. I remember years ago when Lawrence played uh, a lot in, in just standard tuning and then he just sort of switched over and just started doing all these alternate tunings and and uh, at about the same time I was also exploring in those things. Pat Kirtley was the guy that actually got me to, uh, well if you go back beyond that, Chet Atkins has done alternate tunings forever since the 50s and all those old songs, Just As I Am, and uh, I mean, Black Mountain Rag, it was tuned in G. Well, he did it two different ways, but uh, but then I saw Pat Kirtley playing at the Chet Atkins Appreciation uh, Convention, and and he really uh, got me into uh, experimenting and ex exploring around with uh, alternate tunings. But it's so much fun, but that's the, that's the trick. Now, when I do this particular tuning, the, the Digged Gad, D, G, D, G, A, D. If you push this up a whole step, it's just a, it's a, it's a G chord. And so that is uh, another thing I got from Lawrence Juber. He said, that is actually Doyle. That is God's favorite chord, G sus. And a lot of you have heard that, but it is actually a G sus too. A normal G sus would be this. A two when they hear them. And so, Holly? Hey, uh, we have lots of great comments coming in and so a few questions. You guys might want to repeat a couple of the questions we had in the past by a little ways back. Um, if you guys have any comments, go ahead and leave them or any questions you have for, for Doyle. Okay. Um, when you're arranging songs like YouTube Medley, what do you do to keep things from getting repetitive? Uh, Chet Atkins always said, you know, uh, never play it the same way uh, twice. In other words, if you play the song, the first verse, then you do this, do the second verse or whatever, if you repeat it, uh, play it a little bit differently. Uh, and I do that on, the, uh, of course I have to, uh, let me plug this one back in, let me break the guitar for that. I'm actually, uh, when I come home, I just go crazy. I've got... This is uh, actually Eric Johnson's uh, old uh, Echoplex, and um, I had one that he he really liked mine, and and uh, of course I I loved his. He said, "You want to trade?" And so we that's his old one. I said, "Anything belong to you? I'll take." And uh, anyway, I'm always getting things from uh, from Eric, especially. He just gave me a Strymon pedal, a Blue Sky, that I've been using, and when I go out with the uh, the Booth Brothers. Or when I played with Phil uh, Driscoll a few nights ago, and it sounded like strings, uh, uh, I didn't bring it up into, into my guitar room tonight. It's, it's, uh, it's getting ready to go to West Virginia. Okay, the first time... two notes for the first one was and I'll hit that and it just sounds a little British and then when you do this one
two bases, uh, two G notes in. I don't want to. I just hit him, just gives you a little more bottom end. Almost like you're, you have a, a, a like a, a bass drum or tom thing going on with a drummer. Second time through, I do it high. Sorry. that I'm doing sort of a Grandpa John. I used to play with Grandpa John. I used to play for Grandpa Jones. Can you believe that? Anyway, he would do this Fralin thing where he would play backwards. So I'm coming. Just keep it going. And, you know, if you have to strum down or pull up, and then and the thing is with this uh, medley, it builds. And uh, I should probably put this uh, over a little bit, like uh, maybe something. Yeah, something like that, maybe a little more. And. Uh, When I'm doing that, and you hear my bomb, bomb. I'm, I'm. And so what I'm, I'm doing is, I'm actually hitting it real hard so you can hear that D note, and then, and then I mute it so you're only hearing so bomb, bomb. Build it. Hear that bass? I'm doing the top, and I catch that uh, on the beat. Dom, bom, bom. feeling that you have a, a bass player boom 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 and I'm only doing it like this just muting it with my thumb so that's a trick sorry maybe it's taking too long for that we have a lot of nice comments that came in another uh, one we have was um, what's your favorite chicken figure exercise to do oh uh, probably uh, oof, I don't know um, um, probably should uh, maybe go over to the Gretsch on this I want to yeah. show you my Gretsch can't wait to show you my Gretsch. This is a, a new uh, White Falcon that Gretsch just sent to me. And uh, I played at the Chet Atkins Appreciation Society Convention this past weekend. And, uh, and so this was a, a desire of mine for so long to have one of these White Falcons. I'll turn the, the volume up just a little bit on this. I'll turn this down. Thank <laughs> you. 
So those are the, the chicken picking and banjo picking. Uh, that's probably going to have to be a future guitar lesson because <laughs> a lot involved in that. But that's what I do. And now let's get a fast. Open, two notes fretted, then open, two notes like so. It's the same thing I do, and I'll and I we'll, we'll spend the a night doing that if you like. And um, in fact, we were going to start on our guitar lessons in May, and I apologize for that, but it wasn't anything that we could help. Um, I had one little window, and, and the, the technician could not do it. And then uh, Haley had her little baby, Emmylou, which we are very, very proud of. We love our Emmylou. She's my little football with eyeballs, and mm -hmm. uh, she grins, and she's, she's, she's such a blessing. It puts guitar playing way back down to the bottom. So sorry, guys. So mm -hmm. we've had some family things going on. So it's really great to be here with you tonight. Holly, I love this Periscope thing. This is great. It's awesome. Um, a quick question, too. How long does it usually take you to work on an arrangement for something? So, you know, it all depends. Sometimes um, it's something to stay in your head for years before I'll ever do anything with it. And uh, that may be an arrangement or that may be a... a an idea for a song, but uh, an arrangement, um, sometimes they come like that too. And sometimes I'll have something in mind that I thought I was writing a song about, or maybe an intro to another song. And uh, For instance, let me give you an example. Um, at the Believers Convention, Kenneth Copeland, uh, was it almost a little over a week ago, I was there with Phil Driscoll, and I was playing um, a little thing here, by the way, you're going to love this guitar. It's just a, such an incredible thing. Actually, kind of wrote a little song in there. So sometimes it, and it was that arrangement that carried through like a medley of songs, and we kept going right back and on the end. And, and it's something I came up with in this room, writing uh, or uh, putting together a demo for the Booth Brothers for a song that I that I wrote years ago. Uh, anyway, was that an any, answer? <laughs> are you working on any nylon string pieces right now? Yeah, and my nylon string is here. I just uh, I, I just came in and, uh, and and took out these Gretsch guitars. I took out another old Gibson guitar that uh, Kelly uh, Barber just refretted for me um, in Hawkins, Texas. And this was a guitar that was uh, that he resurrected. It was out of the '50s, and everything's original except I think the bridge. And then we put an LB6, uh, Lloyd uh, Baggs' bow over at Lloyd Baggs sent me an LB6. 
And then on this guitar, uh, I've played uh, Gretsch events for years, and, and I love my White Falcon. This has the Dynasonics, uh, which sounds more like the Dwayne Eddy single coil pickups, and they're, they're wonderful. I mean, they sound great. I love that guitar. In fact, Ronnie Booth played that on the Grand Ole Opry uh, when, uh, when we were on together not too long ago. I played my Olsen, and he played that. And so it, it's acoustic sounding. It's amazing how well, uh, how great it sounds just acoustically. And, uh, but having said that, in fact, Caleb, uh, my son, was the one that brought that up. Well, Dad, that, that Falcon is the most acoustic Gretsch sound that you have as far as just the guitar. And so uh, LR Bag sent me um, this pickup system. It's a hex pickup system, actually, just like the Doyle Dykes model, uh, Taylor that we worked years on. Uh, I worked with Lloyd Bags on that for several years. And of course, they came, they're the rocket scientists. They came up with all of it, but we just worked with it and worked together on it. And so Kelly put this pickup in this guitar without uh, doing any alterations on the guitar whatsoever. He didn't modify the guitar. The only thing he did was take this switch off, which I don't typically use. I usually use it in the middle position on the normal Gretsch on, with the Filtertrons. I have some old, a uh, couple of old Gretsches too, and I have this old 58 here, but this has the Dynasonics in it as well. And, uh, and this is, just has one toggle switch. But when they went with the, uh, the Filtertrons, they, they put this uh, tone switch in there, which uh, there's no tone control on this guitar. And so if you look and see, there's the, that's where the battery is right here. And uh, Kelly Barber uh, did this. It, it was his genius, and uh, and it just did a, a wonderful a wonderful job on it. I think it just just a super job. And so he what he did, all the thing he did was they they cut a little slot here in the pickup ring. And uh, there's a guy there named Johnny too that uh, that helped him with this. But uh, and they they put this switch here. Now this is just. Uh, this is just the pickup, so. setting to do that would be more like on this one or where this is just this pickup now what if I did a song like that lower this actually able to play uh, How Great Thou Art and The Lord's Prayer and uh, The Visitation. You can get lower tunings because the long scale sounds really good. You can also put this on the 6120 and it would sound good.
up just pulls that bass out whoa it's just it just fills the room and uh, what a what a wonderful combination here and uh, just uh, if you want something like that done just call Kelly uh, Kelly Barber Action Sound. He's the guy that did it for me. You can contact uh, LR Bags for the pickup. I have no idea exactly what that would cost, but they can they can help you. I, I actually put this little piece of foam I found out in, in my uh, in my guitar parts thing. It was around a pickup. Someone asked me, "Did Gretch put that on there for you?" Because you know how they'll have the mute, but they the reason for that is because this pickup will actually pick that up as well. The vibrations. And uh, but it's a very sensitive guitar, so I put that on there so it wouldn't do that. But it's a wonderful sound. So, and we had another comment that said that you've mentioned that you're influenced by piano players. Can you elaborate on that a bit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are several ways you can look at that as a, as a guitar player. Two guys that were the greatest influences on me were Chet Atkins and Merle Travis. I mean, Les Paul was too, but as far as finger style guitar, those were the guys. And both of them said, I'm just a piano player on the guitar. And Chet was more like a stride piano player, like he'd hit the one and then the chord and then the five. And that's your left hand, that's what your thumb is doing. something you know they quit playing the rhythm and then they do a run same thing with guitar playing Merle Travis said well I'm more of a honky-tonk piano player on the guitar <laughs> The Chet Atkins celebration, they did a celebration uh, last year. Steve Warner, Steve actually called me, asked me to do that. It was an honor to work with him again. Steve Warner, Dwayne Eddy, Dr. John Knowles, Richard Smith, and a number of guys, um, Pat Burgesson. And, uh, and we just talked about Chet, talked about Gretsch guitars. It was his 50th anniversary um, as an endorser for, for Gretsch. It's when he signed, actually, with Gretsch. And so I talk about that. I talk about Merle Travis and show the different the different styles. And uh, as far as the faster play, and, and then on the slower side of things, um, also the same way. If you ever heard of uh, a piano player like uh, my brother's one, but you don't know him, you may know, remember Anthony Berger, you know, and the way he would play his single notes and then play the rest around that, you know, or if a piano player is playing with a singer and the singer is always louder, you know. <laughs> Chet did that too. When it, if it was just a the lead singer is, is louder than a, playing accompaniment like a piano player. Also when I'm playing a song like How Great Thou Art, there's a lot of movement in that and so uh <laughs> And there's a lot of tension and release, as Chet uh, used to say, and that's what that's what he felt made a good arrangement. And so uh, it's dynamics, and that's more piano-esque than guitar. Is this your studio? Uh, well, <laughs> I sort of emptied my studio out. Um, you know, I was talking to Phil uh, Driscoll a few days ago, and, and he said, I don't like uh, having a studio at home anymore. You know, it just takes too much out of your life and and you know when you get ready to record 
you know, you, you go over ideas at home and then take it to the studio and just, and then that, and it, it just f comes together. If you have a studio all the time, he said, sometimes you get, you get boggled down in it and you, you can fix it any time or you can go out and do this and fix that and make that perfect and that perfect. And then you lose it. It's, it when you go into, um, a studio, uh, and you know you're only there for a day or two or a week or whatever it might be, you know, it's more spontaneous. And uh, and that's the way I've worked for years. I used to have a student, I used to record here uh, or in my house. It was actually, I did a finger style guitar and several other records at uh, our other home that we had. And, uh, but I lost an ear a few years ago. A lot of you know that, but um, it, it's hard to have one headphone on and one headphone off and being up and, and then, you know, messing with the recorders and doing all that kind of stuff. I, I don't want you, I'm not trying to make anybody feel sorry for me. I'm just telling you, it's a lot easier to have someone there that's doing that. And all I have to do is just think about playing the guitar. So I don't record here anymore. I mean, I may do a demo like for the Booth Brothers, like, like I did. Um, and can everyone take a second and leave a comment to where you're tuning in from? I'd love to um, tell them where you're coming from tonight. Yeah, we had them coming in from England. We had Texas, and, yeah. and where else are we tuning in from? You can leave a comment below. Yeah, this is fun. I, I Tampa. Wow. All right, Indiana. My home right. state, Tampa. Yeah. Or Florida. <laughs> Lexington, we have uh, Texas, Charleston, Raleigh, Kentucky, wow. Jacksonville. Wow. All right. Phoenix. Yeah, cool. Isn't this fun? You're all right here with us. Louisiana. In my studio. This is a fun little guitar. This, this, uh, the old Gibson. Uh, and I, I, I just love when I come home, I like to play guitars that I won't carry on the road. And I, I, I think my number, my number one guitar right now is, is, is this. And, uh, I say right now, like it's not always going to be. But uh, I'm getting a cutaway version of this guitar, this very guitar. This is Pernambuco, is what he called it. I, I would, I, you know, Pernambuco, I've heard other people call it, but um, that's what Mr. Olson calls it. And uh, I would call it what Mr. Olson calls it, I think. <laughs> but the workmanship on this guitar and um, his necks are so rigid. They just bring so much um, uh, energy out of the top. And they're not a big guitar. It's the same size that James Taylor plays. Um, and he is getting so many orders right now that uh, he doesn't even need them anymore. So I think he's turning orders down now. So I'm very thankful to have that. The, the, this goes back, uh, this, this is called a small jumbo. This is also a, uh, a smaller jumbo guitar. It, it is a smaller version of a J200. And, uh, so this was an, uh, SJ185, I think is what they call it. And it has uh, an LR bag system just like my Olsen has in it. for me to pick up this guitar and do Travis stuff. I mean, it's just, just sings out for that. But maple guitars, I love, you know, I love, love maple guitars too. Uh, we would like to do more of this with you guys and uh, would uh, hopefully do, we'll get more of the guitar lessons thing going too. I mean, uh, I showed you a little, little thing there tonight, you know, where you, when you're just doing, just remember to do the two finger thing. And practice on that and do it, uh, practice on it with um, uh, the standard, like uh, with jazz in a box, and then also with some other uh, tunings. And it works really nice. And it's a little signature thing. Um, there's one other thing, if I can show this real quick, just get you started on doing a harmonic. Just touch over the frets, like the 12th fret, while you're picking it. Touch it and let go. And then all over the seventh fret and over the fifth fret.
and this is the way I do the jazz in a box thing. And I'm hitting individual notes. So to get you started on that, let me let me show you this one little quick thing. I, and I usually start with my index finger and I'll go back and forth from my index and my thumb. So picking part is important too. So pick this with your index finger on the fifth string and just let go and actually you don't have to necessarily let up. It'll still ring out. And because uh, if you don't, you'll be doing this. If you do let up, you know, you'll be hitting it like that. So just kind of touch it. Put this one ahead of this one. And now with your index finger, touch your sixth string over the, the seventh fret. Now notice how the fifth string is lower than the sixth string because of the harmonics. This is higher here than here. So this becomes higher. Fifth, sixth, fourth, fifth, third, fourth, second, third, first, second, third. So here you go. And so try that. And uh, you, you've heard that before. Uh, Chet Atkins, Merle Travis. There you go. <laughs> Until next time, God bless you guys. Thank Thanks. you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you.